you guys could have sold rabbits or dogs or cats. Why exotic pets? Well, it's just a, a childhood dream, and you know, you meet somebody who has these animals, and you kind of fall in love with them, and you just follow that passion. So, what kind of uh, animals can you find here? Uh, all kinds of geckos, chameleons, monitors, tortoises, turtles, just about any legally owned exotics we have. And by exotics, these are animals, a lot of these you won't find in Florida, huh? No, many of these animals are found all over the world, but they are in captive breeding programs here in the States, so we don't have to deplete the environment. Bob, what's, what do you think is the most, most exotic or the rarest, or the most unique animal you have here? Well, we actually have an, an exanthic water monitor that's $2,500. Oh my gosh, so tell me about that. Well, it's a water monitor, which in itself is not very rare, but because it's exanthic, it's a designer mutation, which makes it rare. The color of the animal, actually. So, when people come in here um, to, to get some of these animals, what do they need to know? Because I'm, I'm learning about these classes, class one, two, three. What do people need to know if they're interested in this? Well, animal? most animals we carry are under class three permits, which means you really don't need a permit for them. But depending on the species of reptile or exotic, they have special requirements, lighting, food, substrate, supplements, and that's where we come in to help out. So uh, do you give detailed instructions? Oh, of course. You know, we, uh, the whole process from when you buy the animal, the entire time you own the animal, you can call us at any time if you have any questions. Yeah, we uh, are the experts. What's the benefit of owning, say, a snake or chameleon versus a dog or a cat? So, you know, in today's society, a lot of people are having to live in a lot smaller areas, and a lot of people don't even have backyards. So these small terrarium pets are ideal and perfect. Uh, they don't take up a lot of space, and a lot of them actually don't require a lot of interaction, but you do have to take care of them. Some of these snakes, can they grow to be very big? Uh, some species of snakes can be large, uh, but the largest animals we have in the shop are Colombian boa constrictors, which average six to nine feet. So what about the risks of any of these escape from the wild? Is there a, 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 some risk that can fall with that? Well, anything can get loose, but you know, so far there really hasn't been many problems with that. Uh, what do you tell customers? Why is it so important to make sure they don't get loose? Well, these animals are not native to Florida, therefore, you know, this is not their natural habitat. So it's, it's not fair to the animal to be releasing them in these environments. Uh, you mentioned a lot of your animals are class three. Uh, um, what are, if you, I don't know if you know any off the top of your head, what are some interesting random animals that people can legally own uh, that they may not think about? Well, you can own a, a, a large boa constrictor, nine foot. You can own a large monitor. Asian water monitors can attain a length of, you know, six, seven feet. So if you like that, that's fine. And if you like, you can actually own a giant tortoise. You know, you can have a tortoise that is two to three hundred pounds if you like. Are, do, are those under class three or class two? Or uh, many of those species are under class three. Uh, can anyone buy a class two animal or even class one animal? Well, store? class two and class one animals are definitely, you have to apply for special permits and some of those actually require, you know, some handling experience to go along with them. Hmm. Would you ever own a class one or two? No, that was when I was young, I had venomous, but no, no more venomous for me. <laughs> oh, so you can actually own venomous snakes too? Sure, it's a special venomous reptile license and you apply with FWC, but you can. Wow, that's interesting. So, what do you say to those um, who are, uh, uh, somebody, hold, hold on, let me think how to rephrase this question. I had to tell a brain fart. No, you're fine. Um, should people be worried that, that people could potentially own venomous animals like that in their own neighborhood? Well, I really don't think so. I think you have more concern for somebody having an aggressive dog, if that's the case, as, you know, as far as being concerned about dangerous pets around you. That's a good point. <laughs> Anything else, Bob? Uh, well, the popularity has exploded, you know, because of the captive breeding of these animals and with the increase of trade shows and conventions. And uh, coming up February 24th is Tampa Repticon at the Florida State Fairgrounds Expo Hall. Uh, please come out and see us there. And uh, come by the shop and see us. We're open seven days a week. So, Bob, what, what do you guys have here? Well, we've got quite a few exotics. Uh, we have roughly over 300 stock tanks, so quite a variety. Uh, we have everything from $20 all the way up to $2,500. So 
something in everybody's price range. So what is this right here? Uh, this is an Exantic water monitor. Now it's an Asian water monitor, but what makes it so rare and special is it's Exantic, which is scientifically speaking black and white. So it's just a mutation of that animal. Hmm. So it's kind of rare? It is rare. Is this, is this animal dangerous at all? No, this animal at this, it's not venomous, and uh, they're known to become quite friendly. A lot of people, you know, kind of let them run around the house every now and then. They do get large. This is one of those large monitors. They can attain a length of six to seven feet, even longer. So you do have to know that when you acquire an animal. You know, it actually brings up a good question I didn't think of. Are most exotic animals dangerous at all? Well, I, I guess that all depends on how big the animal gets. You know, any animal that can attain a large size has the ability to, you know, to, you know, you need control or at least enough strength to overcome it if it ever, you know, gets, it gets out of control. So I suppose people need to be prepared if they're looking sure. to buy an exotic You need pet. to do your research, you need to find out how big the animal gets, and you need to be sure you're going to be able to take care of that animal from, for its entire life. It's a pet, so our motto is cradle to grave. <laughs> Great.